Welcome everyone, and today we'll talk about Web3 and decentralized social media. I'm Francesco, developer advocate at Daily Dev. Let's get started. Let's start with the agenda, so what we'll talk about today. Uh, first of all, we will have a very short introduction about uh, Web3. Then uh, we'll, we'll see the status of the social media currently in 2023, social media and Web2. And then we will see the transition, transition to a more decentralized approach to, for, uh, for the social media. After that, uh, of course, uh, we will see uh, an, a real example. We will take uh, Lens Protocol as example. We will also make uh, a very short uh, demo. And then uh, at the end, there is also a bonus track, so something that I, I added uh, uh, recently. So does it have to be a, a blockchain to be decentralized? We will see. <coughs> OK, so, so first of all, as I said, we will start with uh, some definition and then principles uh, of, uh, of Web3. And of course, uh, it can't, we can't miss uh, a slide with Web2 versus uh, Web3. <coughs> of course, after this, uh, we will do uh, more introduction. We will see state, uh, some issues of social media. We give some, something for granted when we use social media, but uh, maybe it doesn't have to be that way. And we also talk about the user experience, of course, from also a developer perspective. And then we see if there is an intersection between the Web3 and social media, if the Web3 can help uh, building a more effective and more user-centric uh, social media. OK, so in just one uh, slide, let me try. <laughs> what is, uh, is Web3? Web3 is uh, the decentralized internet. I'm honestly not a fan of this name, but uh, we, we also had this in the title. I also a project called like that. But to be honest, so I'm, I prefer the term blockchain. But uh, I, I, st I think we still need a term for blockchain used in the current state. So using the current internet, the current World Wide Web uh, as we use it uh, today. For example, the blockchain doesn't have uh, direct, uh, in direct interaction with the World Wide Web uh, with some API, but there is something called uh, oracles that can help us uh, to interact, uh, to make the blockchain interact with the World Wide Web uh, and vice versa. And so Web3 aims to basically shift the, the dynamic of having a more uh, something more focused on, we are, we are missing a line here, um, aims to shift the dynamic of having more uh, control on, over the current state of the current applications and the decentralizing the authority. And also, what I really like about the blockchain is that it's more open and transparent. Everything that happens on the blockchain is uh, public. There is something called uh, block explorers, and we can check uh, all the transactions, what happens, and also the code, uh, the evolution. So very simple three, three principles of Web3. The first one is that uh, the users uh, has control over the data, data that they, they create. And also the concept of uh, having a decentralized authority is very important. So also by, by definition, by architecture, all the blockchain themselves, they have a consensus algorithm. So by architecture, they, they, they help to create something which is more decentralized. And of course, as I said, a more open, open and transparent network, which has, of course, some good advantages. <laughs> and now, uh, yes, and of, of course, Web3 versus Web2. So uh, the main differences are in the ownership. So who owns? Uh, what and the control of the data. Then uh, the power dynamics is basically the censorship that could happen in Web2 applications. And then about the, the money, the monetization. For Web2, there is what the currencies that are as we know them today. And for Web3, there is, there is more like the cryptocurrencies. So before going on the next uh, slide, we already see that uh, from a social media user, perspective, uh, those things are very important. So monetizing uh, what, what we do, having the control of what, what we publish, uh, and also 
making sure that uh, no, our account doesn't get uh, blocked uh, for reasons that we we don't know. I don't know if we've been following lately, but uh, things have been going have been gone, uh, uh, kind of wild. For example, on Twitter, and we do, so we don't know, for example, what will happen in the future. This can, can these things can change from one day to another one. And uh, so, and what is the social media state? I, I'm sure that I missed uh, some of the <laughs> of the social media apps. I'm active, I think, in most of in most of them, maybe maybe all of them. And uh, the the thing is that uh, the social media apps, uh, as we know them today, they're not bad, you can say. But uh, there is this uh, issue by default, which is uh, a more uh, centralized uh, control, and we give this for granted, like. It's normal if they create an app uh, like that, everything is there. But it doesn't have to be like this. And, and also about the the algorithm, and sometimes uh, the algorithm of uh, an um, an application can really influence, or it can also change over time. Uh, I don't know, but many times it happens that I see people creating content about uh, like the Twitter algorithm changed, or the YouTube algorithm changed, and they create content on that. Uh, we don't really even know if they are right, uh, or right or wrong. But we don't, we don't know, because they don't tell us, uh, hey, the algorithm changed. Maybe on Twitter now we see that it's more open source, but we, don't, we still don't know. Like, this is what we see publicly, but we don't know how this, uh, <laughs> what happens behind the scenes still. And uh, yes, and also, uh, also, something that uh, is a bit strange is that uh, the social media, they decide how we monetize the platform or if we monetize the platform. For example, on YouTube, they have a model. You either use that model or you can't uh, monetize in, uh, in the, in, uh, on the platform itself, of course. And um, yeah, so this. So which are the main, uh, the main issues uh, on, the, on Web2 and the social media? So privacy problem of, of privacy, privacy concerns, uh, for even if they tell us that they will not use the, the, our, our data or our personal data, we still don't know because everything we do on the platform is, uh, is not ours. So, and also there is this uh, lack of transparency, which is uh, of course uh, something that uh, it's uh, by architecture because they are closed uh, applications and so they, they can easily hide what they don't, don't want to show, they don't want uh, users to, to know about. And then also the last, uh, I, think, I think last but not least for sure, is uh, censorship. And uh, this is not just for, for social media, it can also be for, for generic uh, Web2 applications. Uh, I think one of the biggest concerns is with PayPal, uh, like, uh, they can just close your account one day and you just uh, <laughs> can't do much about that, or maybe yes. And so, so this is, uh, these are the three uh, main issues. Also, from a user, from user experience, uh, in the two, uh, there, are, there are three, mainly three, which the first one is that we can, will have uh, some personalized uh, content, some targeted ads. This is not necessarily bad, Sometimes it's a bit weird. For example, I bought a, a new graphics card <laughs> of NVIDIA and, and still get like ads of like buy one or maybe uh, this is not worth buying, but so personalized ads on this. And also we are highly, highly dependent on the platform algorithm, so what happens on the app. Sometimes, uh, uh, for example, on, on TikTok, sometimes it's uh, like people based on whatever they do based on the algorithm. So the content itself is based uh, on how the algorithm works, which is a bit, a bit strange. And then, of course, we have uh, some limited control on the, on the personal data. <laughs> so as you as we can see, there are some, there are some issues. The, those are not the only ones, uh, but I mentioned the, the most important ones. And uh, the, so what we should have is uh, to have a more uh, decentralized control. So we should shift uh, from something which is more uh, only of the, of the application to something which is more like uh, of, uh, of the community, or at least uh, for, the, for the people who are the community of the person in the center of the, of the social media, the, the creators, if we want to call them like that. And so we should have also more user control over data. Now, 
These are the main principles. Can the blockchain play an important role in this? I think yes, because by architecture, the, the, the blockchain can help giving more transparency, giving more, uh, con more uh, distributed consensus, uh, and so on, and also being more, uh, more focused on the single, the single users. And so I would like to introduce you a practical example. This example is, uh, the, Lens, is the Lens protocol. I don't know how many of you ever he heard of this. Did someone have heard this? One, two people, okay. Nice. So, uh, so the Lens protocol is uh, a Web3 modular social graph uh, on the Polygon blockchain. So the most important part is that, uh, of course, there are many <laughs> keywords here, but I would like to stop one moment on the social graph. So a social graph is not a single app, but it's like all the connections that we have uh, with all our social media. For example, I... Uh, follow Eddie. Uh, Eddie uh, is subscribed to my YouTube channel. I am subscribed to, to, to someone else. So it's all, uh, all the connections with all the apps. So this is very important. So Lens protocol, it's protocol <laughs> and not, uh, not a single application. This is a very important in the shift of the, how we should uh, think about it. So it's designed more focused on the connection between, as I said, the the user, the community builder, and all uh, their, their audience. So creating more a uh, user-owned social graph. <coughs> and also, so it allows three main things, we can say. The first one that I like is the, to add the new features and fixes. I wish I had this on other social media, like Twitter, when we, people could fix something by themselves. Also having some immutable user-owned content, which is more uh, f based on the blockchain, since everything we create is um, immutable. And the last one uh, is probably the one who made me choose also this uh, presentation, which is the portability of followers among uh, different uh, applications. So uh, the Lens uh, protocol, or these social graph uh, applications in general, they try to solve uh, an issue that uh, is uh, we give it maybe for granted on social media, but uh, usually on social media, we don't have uh, portability in the applications. So we are used to this, like we have uh, 10,000 followers on Twitter, then one day say, oh, I should start uh, TikTok, or maybe I should start my YouTube channel. But yeah, the, it is what it is. So we should start, so, or I would say restart from zero. Okay, so this is uh, normal for most of us. Does it have to be like that? Uh, no, because if we have a sort of protocol instead that creates a social graph instead of a single application, even if it's a good one, even if TikTok, we can say that it's a popular application, but it's still an application where you have to start from zero. And if you have some experience in social media, maybe you understand which are the, the problems. Okay. And okay, we could also uh, just annoy our current audience, telling them, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I do this, okay. <laughs> subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please uh, check me on Instagram. Check me on, now I have also TikTok. Uh, nobody cares. Uh, or I have uh, some Twitch account. So we do this. This is uh, something that we do. But uh, using something like, like this, this is an example, we can have different applications, and I, don't, I haven't used all of them, we can use different applications, and the number of followers is shared across those applications. What does it mean? For example, of this, I, don't, I don't use all those applications, I have already enough applications, but uh, I mean, I, I can let me use this uh, laser, I have it. Um, I, I use this one, Lenster and Orb for now. This is more for desktop, and this is more uh, for mobile. There are other applications that I didn't use uh, much, uh, but for example, if one day I want to start uh, creating some, some videos, uh, I can even share them here, but uh, everything is shared across the different applications and they give uh, a slightly different uh, user experience. So I'm sure, that I didn't try this, but I'm sure this is more focused on just the videos and this is more like, more like say Twitter, Twitter style, we can say on desktop. And this is a very good uh, application on, on mobile. So 
it's, uh, it's good, and maybe in the future I'll integrate and try. It's easier to create uh, uh, different, uh, different applications. And, um, and, also, and also these. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how many of you are content creators, or maybe uh, they, they create some, some type of content, or maybe they are active on a platform, but uh, it would be nice uh, to don't worry uh, about uh, what we create. Because, uh, for example, if your, your YouTube account gets closed one day, I hope this doesn't happen, but it, this can happen, we, I think we also lose access to the platform. So if we didn't if we weren't smart enough to save our videos, I do this like once a year, we lose everything which is on the platform. And this is similar across different parts. So we lose the access. This, should, this doesn't happen on something like this. And, um, and also, uh, so as I said, every application can benefit from the whole the whole ecosystem, and, uh, and this is very important now for developers, because developers uh, can also design some uh, meaningful social experiences. It's not very hard to create uh, uh, an app like this. I will not do, do exactly this uh, in this uh, presentation, but I'll just uh, do a, a kickstart, you can say. But you can create uh, a whole uh, application, and the important part is that if you create an application on uh, uh, something similar like, the, uh, like that, uh, you, you don't have to, uh, to focus on something which is like, for example, on Twitter now, you can create a Twitter application, but then you have to pay to use the API, or the experience might change in the future. And this is a nightmare for a developer who has uh, some, some side projects, for example. So, just a quick overview on the Lens protocol, just some terms. So there is something called the profiles, so we create, actually created a profile. And then there are users, which are, have, they need a standard crypto wallet. You, you don't need to pay. You just need a crypto wallet because this is how you have the identity on the blockchain. And this protocol is built from the ground to top using modularity. We'll see this soon. And it also uses something called multi-sig, which stands for multi-signature. So uh, this is uh, to enhance the security. OK. Don't, don't run now. Let me speak. OK. So users, so users must create a profile on the hub. And for this, they will receive a profile NFT. Now, we probably know NFTs more because uh, some people sell NFTs and they get money. <laughs> the NFTs, uh, as, as they have different use cases. And one of the important use cases uh, is uh, to, uh, to have the, the identity, we can say, to, to prove the ownership. In this case, uh, we create an NFT not to sell uh, a picture, but to prove our um, identity on an application. So it's basically to, it's the same as to create uh, a Twitter account. So everything is, is based uh, on, this, uh, on this profile uh, with controlled, uh, but uh, an NFT, which is also, holds also the, all the history of what we do, we do on the application. And this becomes basically the profiles controller, is the authentication, basically. This is how authentication works in uh, blockchain technologies. Now, <coughs> very fast, we have uh, this uh, part of the uh, tokenization for the Lens protocol, and we have three different, uh, three different contracts. One is the Lens Hub contract, which is, let's say, the, the base one, when we basically have all the, all the interactions. And then we have uh, a follow NFT contract, which is uh, deployed when uh, you follow someone for the first, uh, first time. And this is interesting, because usually when we follow someone for the first time, I don't know, maybe we get a notification. But uh, the thing is that here we might add uh, some logic that happens when we follow, follow someone. We can enhance this part. And another part of this tokenization part uh, is the collect NFT contract, which is uh, deployed uh, when there is uh, the collect of a publication. In simple terms, the, a collection is a sort of bookmark. So when we when we use the bookmark feature in, there in, in many apps, uh, there are also in the LIDEV, um, and you basically, you can, we can trigger some logic. 
So as I said at the beginning in the introduction of the Lens Protocol, we have uh, some, uh, we have modules. So modules are these uh, standalone uh, contracts uh, and they usually adhere to a, a simple interface, but they can really be powerful and used in many different ways. And we have uh, three main, main ones. So one is the follow module, which is, uh, is interesting because it has the logic that will be executed when someone attempts to follow someone. So this does mean that if, uh, when, I, when I try to follow someone, they can trigger something. We can enhance uh, this logic. It's not uh, just uh, binded in the application, but we can change this, I can say. For example, we can get that uh, we will receive uh, some monthly, monthly fee or something different, okay? Then we have also the, um, the collect modules, and this is also, it contains some logic that will be executed when, we, when a user try to collect a publication. Again, collecting is like a bookmark, and publication is basically a post. So basically when we, someone bookmarks, I don't know, a post, we can make some logic to, to happen. And, uh, and the last is uh, the reference module, which is used uh, to uh, when, when we uh, comment uh, or reshare, Mirror is basically a retweet, uh, reshare uh, a given publication, a given post, uh, or, or either another comment. Um, okay, so what can, uh, so we said that there were two types uh, um, of uh, profile of, of in the architecture. There is uh, uh, profiles and users. So profiles, profiles uh, can do different, different things. They can set uh, the, an image uh, URI, you, they can publish something, so they can post and comment, uh, share things. Uh, and then, as I said, uh, they can set this follow module. They can define some logic that happens uh, when uh, someone, uh, they try to, to, to follow them. For example, other feed, but not, not only that. It can also be I don't know, a welcome message or something similar. Um, and instead, if you have a regular wallet, uh, you can't do much, but you still can follow someone, so basically you execute the follow module logic, if there is any, or you can use, uh, you can execute the logic when you collect something, collect uh, something that has been, uh, has been published. Collect is basically a bookmark. Now, how does Lenster looks like? Uh, similar, similar to Twitter and to many different applications. As I said, this is uh, not Lens protocol, but this is Lenster, which is an, ap an app on the whole uh, Lens uh, protocol ecosystem. You can create a similar application with not much, uh, much time. Okay, so now let me try to, to make a, a demo, five minutes, and we'll try to do a very simple, just to get started, a very simple hello, hello world of this, uh, of this uh, application. So let me try. So, um, okay. So, by the way, to, ha to have this, uh, uh, to try this uh, um, Lens protocol application, we are not writing smart contracts. We'll create a next uh, JS app. So we are more focused on the front end part. Okay, we're not writing smart contracts, Solidity, not, nothing of those. So, um, okay, so the default is basically this one. And uh, it's very simple. If you want, you can also try. So. We can create this, uh, this uh, next application. Let me see here. I'm already in a folder, okay. Okay, is this correct? No. Wait a sec. LS, yes. One moment. Okay. Okay, so let's do this. Okay. How many of you know next JS? Next okay. As Lint, Tailwind CSS, React. Okay, next so yes is a React uh, framework. And basically here we are creating, a, but this is not uh, blockchain stuff. This is, a, next JS is a framework to create uh, uh, front-end application. So in the meanwhile, so we created a very simple uh, application and then we can install a couple of dependencies. Dependencies we have uh, uh, Apollo client and GraphQL. How many of you know GraphQL? Okay, and Apollo client. Okay, nice. Okay, nice. So 
usually I forget to step into the directory. Remember, I remembered the nice. So we'll install these dependencies. Then we'll set this. I'm following this tutorial here, just uh, super fast. So basically, we will change the tsconfig.json, the configuration for TypeScript, and we'll create a simple file and we'll replace uh, the uh, the content of the main main uh, main file. So let's see. Okay. So. Uh, Okay, so let's do it. Nice. Okay, so in the good TS config, let's change this. Uh, no implicit any faults. Okay. And then, uh, then we can create uh, a file called uh, api.ts. Uh, this will be at the, at the root level of the application. This is not uh, very complicated. It just defines this, uh, this Apollo client and this uh, GraphQL, uh, GraphQL query. Wait, uh, here. OK, so here, api.ts. OK, this one. Maybe we can either try to run this, npm run dev. Okay. <laughs> nice. I did create this so you can do it on another port. Let's see if this does work. So this should have, we should have here a very simple hello world with next gen SJS. This is basically just, uh, this has nothing to do with the example that we are doing now. This is just a simple SJS application. And then, uh, wait a moment. Then basically we have just to replace the content that we just saw, which is the default one, with the one here of this, uh, um, this lens. Uh, Lens up, so I'm just uh, just copy pasting this. Uh, it uses Tailwind, and it's uh, it's kind of straightforward, we can say. So up, uh, let's say page T six. Okay, so let's remove this. Uh, okay, and this is um, basically all uh, all the code that we need. And it uses use effect, and uh, but it's uh, that's it. Okay, let's go back here. And now I forgot the link. Moment, let me check. Where is here? Okay, and as you can see, we have a very basic, super basic uh, hello world uh, using this lens protocol that uses this uh, lens uh, API. So, of course, we should work a bit more on this, uh, but this is a very good start. Also, required uh, a couple of minutes, let's say, to set it up. And then here we, you can. You, you can explore this documentation, you can uh, set uh, different uh, GraphQL uh, queries, uh, and you can do many, many things here. Nice. Um, okay, so let's go back here. Let's present. Okay. <coughs> nice. Okay, so some some closing notes So on this, uh, this very basic example of uh, the Lens Protocol. So Lens Protocol is this... Uh, composable and modular social graph. So not a single app, but a whole social graph protocol. And of course, it's, uh, it's meant to be uh, owned by a whole community and not a single, um, uh, uh, not the single application it's, uh, themselves. And also to be always evolving over time. I mean, they, they are still in a very beta phase. And, uh, and so users, uh, can basically decide, users and developers, I would say, especially developers, so maybe they know where, what, how they can uh, create something from scratch. So they can improve their social graph and they can also decide if and how they want to monetize this uh, application. And this is a, an interesting uh, paradigm uh, in the ownership and how we uh, think about, about the social media. And sometimes, uh, Sometimes what here is, is possible is not even possible for web two applications. For example, uh, YouTube allows, allows you to monetize, but it still uh, ha it has to deal with all the banks and all the existing uh, currencies. OK. <coughs> Nice, nice. Now, bonus track for this one. So uh, I added this uh, just uh, one month ago because uh, I was preparing this presentation and I said, okay, but uh, then we had this, uh, um, let's say, information that we had, uh, we started this. 
How many of you ever ever heard about Blue Sky? Oh, okay. Some people have heard of this. So, I was excited about Blue Sky at the beginning, but then I saw that uh, it was not based on the blockchain. So I said, okay, so my presentation is, uh, is trash. No, so I said, I tried to, to improve it and see if this is also a valid alternative. And we'll see also some similarities. So the first thing is that this Blue Sky is an initiative to create a decentralized network, but it's not based on the blockchain. So. Uh, this is Jack Dorsey, is one of the founder, or maybe the founder itself of the um, Blue Sky uh, project. I think this project started inside the Twitter, but of course now it's something, of course, uh, totally separate, maybe a future competitor, we don't know. So the idea is to create uh, this uh, decentralized uh, social network. So again, this is uh, something called the AT protocol, so Blue Sky is an app, but then there is something called the AT protocol, which is similar to the concept uh, that we saw on the Lens protocol. So maybe this is the trend that uh, who is creating a, a social media system now, it's not more creating a single application. They're creating a whole uh, ecosystem that can be empowered by, by developers and also by the users or whoever they want. So again, uh, this is uh, uh, a protocol. Let's just see a, a very... Um, a very short uh, um, overview. So the identity, the identity in the AT protocol is, in, um, is done by domain names. Uh, and these domains, uh, it maps to a cryptographic URL, which has nothing to do with cryptocurrencies, <laughs> okay, uh, of course, it's just uh, cryptography. And this secures uh, both the user's account and the data. And also you can set up, uh, I didn't do this yet, but you can set up a, uh, um, custom, uh, you custom domain for this. <coughs> also, there is the con there is the concept of uh, data repositories, and it's basically when uh, when data is exchanged, and they are basically a collection of uh, records. So everything which is we all know that is on the social media, so any post, uh, the comments, uh, the likes, and whatever. So identity it signs in, and then these uh, repository uh, records. Okay, and about this uh, uh, federated uh, networking model, the, com the commands are sent, uh, some sent between uh, uh, servers using something interesting, which is HTTPS and also XRPC, which is a new protocol created by the AT protocol. We, and of course, they, they are not proprietary, so you can also use this, uh, but they, by default, they use uh, a different protocol to exchange uh, messaging between servers, uh, which is also interesting. And there are three main services, uh, personal data servers, uh, PDS, uh, big graph services, BGS, uh, and the app views uh, just to display, uh, will display something uh, for, the, for, the, for the users. So also about the, the, the scalability, we have uh, uh, dif different responsibilities, you can say, between the two services that I mentioned before, so personal data servers and big graph services. So personal data servers are more responsible for hosting and distributing this, uh, this data and managing the identity of the users and also orchestrating these, uh, these requests. And instead, the, the big graph services, they handle everything that happens on the, on the protocol so the likes uh, and whatever, the discovery, so the feed, uh, the algorithm, and also the, the search, the, the, advanced, the advanced search. Uh, another, another important uh, part is uh, the, the index search. So, um, so basically, when we have uh, a feed, we can define this feed. Usually when we define, I don't know, our uh, Twitter, uh, Twitter feed, we can say, okay, I'll follow these uh, tags, uh, but then we don't know what happens, if this will really show some of, the, of those tags uh, and whatever. And also, there is a, an important difference that uh, we are still on the platform itself. So it's all, everything we generated, uh, these indexes uh, by Twitter itself. Instead, here we can uh, take something served by a third party service, which is interesting. And then uh, the last, uh, Last concept is the uh, account uh, portability. So uh, I don't know if they, they've done this uh, to, to, to have less, uh, less noise, but basically you can, uh, um, you can port your, your account 
um, in, in an easy way, so they can migrate this account without involving <laughs> the, the, current, uh, the current server. So, and as you can see, so the user data is, uh, is stored in this, uh, in, this, in, in this signed data repositories. They are, they are similar to, to Git repositories. And then they have this verified DIDS, which stands for Digital Identities, and, this, um, and they are basically used similar to TLS, uh, Transport Security Layers. And the uh, last one is, uh, so the, the, mm, the, the, this uh, digital identity document has two public keys, not just one. It has one for the signing key, and then it, it also has uh, some reco a recovery key, which lasts for 72 hours, for three days, and it can be used to override the signing key in case we, we get lost. And, um, and so the, the signing key is uh, entrusted in, the, in this uh, PDS, which stands for uh, personal data servers. And this recovery key can also say, be saved by the user, whatever they want, and it can be used to restore this, uh, this account. And how does uh, Blue Sky look like? Okay, this is really Twitter. <laughs> this is not uh, something different, <laughs> because of course this is, was done also by, uh, by Jack Dorsey. Uh, I think so, some conclusions and takeaways. So uh, the social, med social media as we know them today, they are not that bad, I use them a lot, but maybe in the future we will see an improvement. And also I see that, uh, especially the new uh, social media, especially the protocols, uh, they are really trying to involve the developers uh, since the beginning. So we didn't see this here, but also for the AT protocol, there is a, a very good uh, guide to get started with the, for, for as, uh, as developers. Uh, and also, the, so they are trying to really bring the developers as soon as possible on the platform. And we see, for example, uh, on other platforms like Twitter, they're doing the opposite and they're going in the opposite direction. They are trying to, I don't know, uh, hide everything and I don't know, uh, throw the developers away. So maybe as developers, uh, it's important, not just as users, uh, but maybe to see if we want to step more into the uh, direction of going into more like these uh, um, application and systems that are more friendly, let's say, for us uh, developers. And again, so the blockchain is decentralized by architecture. So creating something decentralized on the architecture is easier, but uh, maybe it's not the only alternative. And also we don't know even in the future if uh, the um, AT protocol will also can implement uh, some of the features using a blockchain. Nobody is blocking, is blocking them to do this. So, Jen Kuye, I don't know if I said it correctly. Okay, nice, thank you. <laughs> I'm, Yes, um, I'm Francesco, a developer advocate at Delidev. I'm also Docker captain, community builder. I'm very active on social media. That's our web two uh, social media. If you want to discover which one, you can check. You can check it out. Or you can find me uh, not very hard on social media. And uh, can we take a selfie before we go? And then we are done. Go. <laughs> Nice. Okay, I'm here if we want to have an uh, open discussion. I don't know how much time do we have. Hmm, okay, so we have five, uh, five, ten minutes. Thank you.